all right in this video we are going to see how to create this hover effect using vanilla javascript a plain vanilla javascript we are not going to use any javascript library this is created with html css and javascript as you see uh, the bubbles expand as i hover on the screen so this is what we are going to create so this is like the particle js previously we have created a similar video just above this on the playlist you can find now this is the second you can also consider it as second part or it's also a standalone because we are going to create all the functions from the scratch now let's start uh, to follow along with me i leave the source code in the description so that in case if we stuck anywhere you can just copy paste and uh, follow with me now we need three files let's create in demo.html then we need demo.css then we need demo.js now let's link the style sheet first then let's link the script we have canvas div sorry it's a element then we'll use the id canvas now let's style it let's remove all the default margin and padding padding zero and margin zero then box sizing border box then we need to get the canvas element then we need to give width 100 percentage so that it's stretch over the screen we'll give background as linear gradient let me copy the same linear gradient which i have used on the example let's see how does this look demo.html is a file name so we got it if you want you can make this overflow hidden and let's give this to the body cool the scroll bar is gone now let's call the canvas element on the javascript document dot get element by id you know we have given the id canvas let's store it into a variable called ctx now to use the canvas api function we have to call get context function here we need to pass 2d 2d and webgl is the two options we are passing 2d right now because it's just a 2d circle shape which we are going to create in this particular tutorial then we need to give the screen width to the canvas so window dot inner width will give the screen width let's store it to let's give this to the canvas ctx dot canvas dot width let's give the height as well now we need to create an object let's create an object called mouse and uh, it's going to have two value uh, property the first one is x value we'll store this as none then y value we'll store this as none so let's have a event listener which is mouse move on the document so 
we need to get the position of the cursor so to get the position e dot client x will give the x position of the cursor let's store this as mouse dot x the same way the y axis position we'll store this so if you want to check we'll just use console dot log mouse dot x it's an object we are, we are that's why we are using dot with the object we are accessing the property so object dot properties undefined there seem to be an error let's find the line number window dot my bad it's canvas dot canvas is an api we'll store this into a function now you see if i refresh it so now if i hover or move the mouse you will see the x axis and y axis of the mouse cool that's working now let's define some values let's define colors that need that uh, will be used as bubbles so white and red for now and min size is 0 and max size of the bubble 40 and mouse radius let's give 60 so what really happens is at the background there is going to be thousands of small round small circle as i said the window will consist of thousands of small circle so once i hover on one of the circle it is going to expand its size so with the help of mouse radius we are going to understand that we are our cursor is somewhat close to the circle so if it re if it reaches around the 60th radius uh, the distance between the cursor and the circle then the circle expands that's the reason why i'm giving mouse radius we have defined color now let's create a constructor function let's name this as particle so we need to pass the x axis y axis direction x then y axis then we need to pass size then we need to pass color so let's store this values as a po uh, so this constructor is a blueprint so if we create an object of this particular uh, particle object uh, it is going to act as a blueprint and uh, basically it's going to replicate itself on each initialization of this particular object the part the object is particle so let me copy paste this cool we have initialized all the values now we need to create another function we can create this function inside as well but it's not recommended since we are going to use a function called request animation frame it is going to run every one milliseconds so it's better to create a function outside of the function just to avoid performance issue particle dot prototype dot draw let's define this draw function and uh, use ctx dot begin path as you see it's camel case then we need to create a circle the x-axis this dot x this 
dot y then size this dot size then starting angle is 0 and ending angle math dot pi into 2 then the counterclockwise the default value is false so it's simply the argument we need to pass so that we can get the circle now we need to fill the color ctx dot fill style let this be this dot color so this is simply referring to this function so we can access this color over here cool so this is simply both are same now ctx dot fill again we need to create another function so that will check whether the bubble is touching either sides left and right at top and bottom if it touches then we need to change the direction so that it moves the other way so previous in the previous video I have completely covered this it's the same copy bit fu copy paste function I'm doing so this is the function it simply calculates the size of the bubble with the screen size if it try to exceed both the screen then the direction is reversed that's what we have done here and then on each we are going to call this update function every time every one second so on every one second the direction is also getting incremented so you can see plus equal to it's just increment to the current position of x and current position of y and uh, one more these if else is required it's because if we get close to one of the circle then we have to increase the size by 3 and the second thing second uh, function is if the size of the circle is less than 0 sorry it's greater than 0 then we have to increment increment it by 0 0.1 percent so that's the reason when I hover it it is going to get incremented by 0 0.1 percent and then this is the safe if it exceeds below 0 then we should initialize it at 0 and then we need to call a uh, initialize function as I said we are going to have thousands of circle so each circle should have random values of x-axis y-axis direction size and color we have already seen this function in the previous video I'm just skipping this so it's a init function as you see this is going to run thousand times so thousand circle is going to be created the size is 0 the value is calculated as per random value the x value and y axis y value is also a random value calculated with the screen size direction x and direction y this is simply the speed of the circle moving uh, inside the window then it's just then we are calling the color function since we have added two we are going to get the random value either one or two so this function does that work then as a we have created we need to create a variable here so this is simply the array we'll initialize inside as an array so we need to push the created object as I said it's the blueprint we are going to get thousands of object particle object and we are storing this particle object inside the particle array then the final point is very simple we just need to uh, have the request animation frame that uh, will run every one millisecond so this is the function that is going to run every one millisecond so you can see this request animation frame is calling again this function so it is going to get loop again and again now on each loop I want to clear the screen that's that's this line does and then on each millisecond we need to run the update function so what I'm doing is since we have created an object that object has thousands of circles so I'm calling 
the circle one by one and having the update function append to it so as we have already seen the append function will check the direction and will increase the size of the circle as I get close to the mouse radius and then this is simply the direction cool now let's just call the two function which is animate and init so as you see if I refresh this is how the two color comes up so I'll, I'll leaving this to you you can have your own color inside the color array just like this one thank you so much for listening